This series is about understanding the reasons why people cheat and how to prevent it. It's not about condemning the act of cheating. It's about understanding it. This is because not all cheating is the same. Yes, some cheat because they're selfish and have absolutely no moral compass whatsoever, <laughs> while others cheat because their moral compass is telling them to stay in a relationship for altruistic reasons. For example, the emotional or financial welfare of children or elderly parents. Yet doing so often means enduring years or even decades of silent suffering. So I'm not taking sides on this issue. I am not saying what a cheater is doing is right or wrong because each situation is different and I don't have to walk in their shoes or their partners. I am simply presenting a series on understanding as sensitive as the subject is for many. Thanks for joining me. Can you adultery proof your relationship? Well, you know, yes and no. <laughs> um, it's not a clean cut answer. Um, but in a nutshell, I will say yes, because you can come in agreement to use your free will in a way that honors the truth at all times. And if the truth is that you or they cannot maintain fidelity, then it must be expressed before the cheating occurs so that both parties can bow out respectfully. However, this agreement takes two self-aware people who operate at a high level of integrity in character. That's not an easy find. And this is where the no answer comes in. Well, you know, I would say no, you can't adultery proof your relationship because ultimately people have their own free will. They can't be controlled or predicted. So, I mean, yes, conceivably it's possible, uh, but there's always that possibility there that somebody is just not going to act in integrity and honor the truth of who they are or what they want. I think the key here though is emotional connection and realizing that the kind of emotional connection that you need may not be the kind that your partner needs. Again, we go back to these differences that I talked about in earlier videos, you know, with your temperament, your personalities, your drives, your values, your wants, your needs, okay? And so getting that emotional connection, how to do it is not really a one size fits all prescription. It goes back to what are your values versus theirs and how you need to know yourself and you need to know them and they need to know themselves, right? Being self-aware on both ends. Attaining that emotional connection is about knowing their needs and making your needs known. And you know what? I actually put out a video some time ago on how to have quality conversations. I'll include a link for it at the end of this video in case you want to watch it. But just, you know, asking quality questions so that you have quality conversations and you really get to know who this person is before you really get involved and you start understanding you know, what they need in terms of connection is not what I need, or maybe it is. These would be questions like, why did your last relationship fail? or the last few relationships, why have they failed? Another good question would be, what was the best relationship you had and what, what was it about that relationship that made it so great? And after really getting to know this person and what their needs are for emotional connection, it's important to come into agreement. There's power in agreement. And so if you're able to, absolutely. But I mean, if you can't authentically agree, then it's better to accept those losses up front sooner than later and part ways as amicably as possible. Because you can't talk a person out of their needs just as they can't talk you out of yours. And those needs are not gonna go away. Don't fool yourself into thinking that not getting your needs met isn't that big of a deal because you're compatible in so many other ways. Or that in time, they're gonna come around to seeing your point of view. In my experience, that never happens. Another thing that's really important is natural chemistry. And that's something that can't be cultivated. Again, in my experience, try as you might, it, it is either there or it isn't. You either have it or you don't. And if you have it, don't take it for granted because it's not easy to find or replace. And if you don't have it, then I say friend zone that person. Never 
pledge your fidelity to someone with whom you have no natural sexual chemistry with. Or you're going to find yourself trapped in a marriage when that right person comes along who you do have chemistry with. And then it'll torment everybody involved. The trouble is that a lot of people have difficulty staying alone and waiting for that right connection. Because a lot of times the right connection is few and far between. And what I see going on is a lot of people rushing in and out of relationships because they just don't want to be alone. And then they end up with people that really they're settling on because at the end of the day, the truth is they're not compatible with that person or there's, there's you know, not an emotional connection that they value or there's no natural chemistry on a sexual level. So if you are in a relationship where you have it, you are able to come into agreement about using your free will in a way that honors the truth at all times. And the truth is, is that one of you is looking outside of the relationship. That self-aware person with a high level integrity would be able to come and have a conversation, a quality conversation, and say to the partner something along the lines of, I find myself noticing other men or women, whoever it is, you know, and saying it in a spirit of truth rather than intending to hurt right there's a difference like it's not it's not being said like I'm trying to throw daggers at you make you jealous or whatever I I just find my eyes strain and then that other person hopefully because they are in truth and they honor the truth and they are operating in a high level of integrity it was going to respond back in a way where they're not offended and They recognize that this other person is human and they then explore these feelings and solutions together. Because a lot of times, you know, if you're in a committed relationship and you do find yourself looking at others, you, you need to really, rather than be reactive to that, you need to kind of observe yourself and ask yourself, what's really going on here? Why am I not wanting to turn to this other person? Because I'm telling you a lot of uh, relational work, meaningful relationship work can be done if you dig deeper and you take more of an objective role in the matter. And this is a way that you maintain the emotional connection. When you have these situations come up, it's an indication that, that something is deteriorating in that connection, but it's an opportunity to maintain it. Another thing to be aware of is tension in a relationship. I've heard a lot of counselors, life coaches say that too much of it or too little can be bad. Okay, for example, obviously too much tension would be a lot of fighting going on and arguing in the relationship versus too little would be a lot of passivity. And so you really need the right balance because if there isn't some occasional challenges in the relationship, it's, it's going to be boring. It's not going to be interesting. There's not going to be any growth opportunities there. You're not growing together. And I've heard some say, yeah, it should be kind of a ratio of like 10 compliments to one criticism. But if you are, you find yourself arguing more than having harmonious conversations, it it could be too much tension for a relationship or the emotional connection to bear. And then on the other hand, if it's just, if there's no tension at all, then, you know, you never say a crossword, you never get into an argument, you never differentiate yourself as an individual from this person, then... It just gets very dull and people just start looking for something exciting outside of that relationship. Unresolved sexual tension without a healthy outlet can result in a lot of fighting outside the bedroom. And so, yeah, you might have a lot of sexual chemistry with someone like, but you keep fighting with them. (laughs) You know, you think like, wow, the sex is on fire, but if we can't get along outside of the bedroom, you know, And so that might be an indicator that you need to learn uh, a level of mastery involved in resolving conflict emotionally. Maybe you can resolve conflict sexually, but you're not so good at resolving it emotionally. So there's a lot of overlap here between sexual and emotional intimacy, particularly when a woman is involved. And there's a need to be aware of that. So in a nutshell, I would say that... If you want to adultery-proof your relationship, it is very important to attain and maintain an emotional connection. 
being very self-aware of your needs and their needs and having a willingness to meet them, to reciprocate them. To watch the next video, click here. And if you missed the last video in the series, click here. And until next time, thanks for watching, sharing, liking, commenting, and subscribing.